Okay, tell us no. something. No, so when I moved us out of storage, well, I didn't do it, but I had help. But when I was unpacking some of the boxes that we moved out of storage, I came across um, this book. It's a dictionary of comedy terms that was written like in the 1940s. Wow, that's interesting. <laughs> Are you trying to be supportive? I know. I'm, I'm actually genuinely interested. I, I'm and curious. So like, well, yeah, and I was like, comedy terms. You want to guess? And so one of the one of the words was epitaph. Oh, we know that epitaph. Yeah, it's a statement that lies above the person that lies below. Oh, that's pretty good. Get it? it is Wait, what is it called liar. again? Epitaph. It, epitaph. epitaph. A statement it, it's, that it's, lies above. The person she that lies, lies below. below. So it's it's a lie about the person who's buried there. <laughs> Wait, comedy what? Terms. So these are not terms about comedy. These are funny thing, funny, funny ways to redefine words. Yeah, in yeah. The I was 1940s. like, what, what comics in the nineteen forties? I just imagined like stand up comics. <laughs> <laughs> they were funny in the forties. They were funny in the eighteen hundreds. In the 1300s, well, probably not 1300s. That was the dark ages. But okay, here's another one. 2023. Et oh, etc. ETC, a sign that's used to make others believe you know more than you do. <laughs> it was like, yeah, etc. Yeah, I know so many more things. <laughs> and here's the last one I wrote down. Eve. You remember Eve? Adam and Eve? Yeah. yeah. The I'm only familiar. woman, <laughs> the only woman who could not throw up to her husband the better men she could have married. <laughs> <laughs> That's Man. not bad. Yeah, it was pretty impressive. <laughs> All right. Are we keeping that book? Yes. Oh, geez. Yeah, it's, it's, we, we have a lot of books. That, <laughs> that, that, that book is actually in your reading of all the great uh, oh, of all the great works of literature. literature. Yeah. Yes, that's good. I got to get on that. I got to get on that. We should probably rock this podcast first, though. Let's do it. All right. Roll the intro music. Max and Dads, wholesome chaos. Max and Dads, wholesome chaos. Maggie, you would be really proud of me. My eyebrows look really good. I don't know if you can tell right now, but I have nice. discovered something. I've discovered, and Maggie, by the way, uh, has been always, you know, concerned about my eyebrows, which can get <laughs> kind of wild. As any man in a certain age group, their their hair starts growing at some weird rate in weird directions. The and unibrow. The you just now, didn't I, take care of it. I didn't take care of it, but I'm, I'm blessed with good hair. Like, but, but I basically have weird eyebrows. <laughs> and so, and in fact, Maggie, when she lived at home would pluck my eyebrows on from time to time to, and torture me, but also kind of like make me look better. It was very fun bonding father daughter moment. That's hilarious. So, no, I was in Amelia Island in a hotel room last week. And mm -hmm. You know, that mirror that kind of exists in the bathroom, it's a magnifying mirror with a light built into it. Yeah. And it, in hotel telescoping bathrooms. things yeah. in hotel bathrooms. Mm -hmm. You know, I've never really used one of those. I know what they are. I've looked at them before. Right. And so I know kind of what they're for, but I always thought like makeup or that's something a woman would use. And like, what, what could, use can I possibly have for it? Well, it turns out it's an amazing mirror. <laughs> mm -hmm. These things are incredible. Like they, you see everything. And yeah. I was able to get all the little eyebrows underneath and between. And it was like, I, I got into it. I took like a, like 30 minutes to work my eyebrows. Oh my God. They look good. And you're going to do yeah. that every time you travel? As, yeah. As long as they have one of those mirrors. They didn't have one in New Orleans this week, uh, but we I think I'm still pretty home. good. I, we have a close-up mirror at home, but it's not the same. It, no, you should do it. You should do it out of town. <laughs> It'll Those be mirrors my are very nice. Yes, they're very cool. Very cool. There's, I can't believe all was, these years I've spent. I've spent thousands of nights in hotel rooms, ignoring the mirrors. Ignoring the mirrors. It has information about your face you never knew. <laughs> Some of it I don't want to know. Exactly. That was I don't one mean thing, you. I meant me. <laughs> one thing I uh, said when I moved into where I live now was that the bathrooms felt like they were hotel mirrors because they have the lighting around the back side of it like a hotel does and it doesn't have the magnified yeah, one. That's true. But I remember I remember I said this when I first moved in that taking a shower in the bathroom and like using 
the sink and everything felt like I was in a hotel, but it was my hotel. And uh, <laughs> yeah. I'm Paris Hilton. <laughs> I, I got to remember, I got to remember to, to still be that grateful and probably yes. clean my bathroom too. <laughs> <laughs> Again, yeah. when's that maid going to come by? There's no maid right? service. It's like, come on. You have a concierge number, though. Can't you call them and have them come clean something up? We do not have a concierge. Or is that, that's mainly, it's mainly to fix the sink or something? I don't know. Yeah, it's yeah, it's called like a maintenance, maintenance, honey. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, well, there you go. It's so no, it's funny. a very nice apartment, and I can't wait to get back there. I was thinking the other day about planning another trip to L.A. I wrote it down on my to-do list. Um, to I figure out when that. I can go out there. You again. you have a speech booked in about three months. That's not soon enough. No, I got to go sooner. <laughs> I think Waldo was there yesterday. It's not the same. I told him to look out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, mom, you still haven't seen my apartment. I know. I was thinking that, and it makes me very sad. Yeah. But I I have to do some other travel first. Maybe you, I can come out in March. You get to do some I know. other travel. Yes, I get to. Definitely. Yeah, you've been a busy girl. Yep. Who do I think I am? Dan Thurman? Yeah, I know. Get, I've, getting I've on all the these planes? <laughs> I had an eye checkup appointment today from the LASIK that went really well. I'm healing nice. up nice. And yeah. No from longer about, is Maggie wearing sunglasses. Yeah, for thing. about two days, they've been like painless days, which has been nice. And at Pickleball, it's really funny. I've been playing with sunglasses even at night because it's said to avoid eye trauma for two weeks. Which well, you can use goggles. I kind of feel like we should always avoid eye trauma. But for the <laughs> yeah. for these first yes. two weeks specifically, <laughs> I'm avoiding them. Um, Why didn't but, you wear those those goggles they gave you? No, those are my sleep goggles. Can, oh, okay. Cannot contaminate. Um, and I've got okay. a few more days in those. And then, yeah. But I, last night I did take off the sunglasses while I was playing pickle a little bit. Just because it is a little disorienting. And I, I wanted to win. So. <laughs> yeah, but also there's an advantage to it, too. Because your opponents can't see where you're looking. And so they don't know what your shot's going to go. Yeah. But they, she can't see where they're hitting. <laughs> so she can't hit the I, I don't you, think... I don't think they can usually tell where I'm looking regardless. Yeah. And that's also presuming it's going exactly where you're looking and trying to hit it. So <laughs> not always the case, but it's always be. Yeah. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> what, bro? He is so sleep deprived. He literally fell asleep while we were oh, at the bank today. I did. I, we weren't going to say that. I'm sorry. I did not fall asleep in the bank. Okay. I, I feel like we always talk about being tired on this podcast. I'm sorry. I'd rather not. It was a. It was just a long blink. That's that was what I it was. It was a long, something. slow blink. I had an idea for this. I want I want to do a TikTok because people always tell me I look tired and they always tell me to get more sleep. And I do tend to look tired, but I want to do a TikTok or something where I log like every, every morning I'll say how many hours of sleep I got the night before. Cause it's usually like nine or 10. Like I, I prioritize my sleep, um, ah. and then show what I look like. So people will give me a break. <laughs> <laughs> Not a bad idea. Not a bad idea. So I did just get back from New Orleans today. It's been a long day. This morning I was up at 4.30, but it was such a great day. And yesterday was a long day because I, I did a, I shot a weekly video that morning and then had a long you know, day before my speech. Um, it was a client that they'd seen me speak somewhere before, so they kind of knew my work, hired me for two meetings. This is the first of those two meetings. Plus there's a, a booking agent involved. So a lot of people really, you know, invested in the success of this 700 people, big ballroom, mm. New Orleans. I hadn't, That's I hadn't beautiful. been in New Orleans for a long time, which is weird because I, I used to go there very regularly. Like it's one of those cities that that's kind of like a convention hub city. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I've been there a lot. And I was thinking about that because I don't think I've been there since COVID. Hmm. Have you been to New Orleans, Maggie? I don't think I have actually. Maybe no, for an NSA so. event. We were there for one year for NSA. You might have been too young, though. Maybe. Um, the uh, but it's a it's a very cool city. Eddie's been there with me um, a couple times actually, and we've seen some incredible music there and um, had some great great memories, great food. Yeah, I've been Re to Mardi Gras. You've been to Mardi Gras. Mardi Gras <laughs> yeah. coming right up. Mardi Gras coming right up. 
and um, and they're looking forward to it. You can see they're, they're doing some of the decorations already. People are getting prepared. It's a big time celebration, and I think what that they're is, still kind of what suffering. is Mardi Gras? So sorry, but I I know what it is. What is it actually celebrating? Like the day? Do you guys it's know? It's more like a it's more like three weeks. Like it's a <laughs> it's a whole event. Yeah. Uh, there's there's a there's one primary Mardi Gras week, and Fat Tuesday. And what are they celebrating? What's the okay? The, mm. This says Mardi Gras, Mardi Gras refers to the events of the carnival celebration beginning on or after the Christmas feast of the Epiphany and culminating on the day before Ash Wednesday, which is known as Shrove Tuesday. So it's a religious holiday. Who knew? Yeah, no, it's definitely yeah. It's time. <laughs> are we to- sure about? Yes, it is. It's, what it's I know tied about to Ash Mardi Wednesday. Gras. It's like 40 days, what, before or after? I don't know. I I don't know when that falls, but. Hmm. It's a party, though. I, I've never been because I just, I don't like that. Well, actually, actually, I've been there. I had a speech there one time during that week. Oh, that's crazy. And I was downtown. So I didn't Somebody get to experience some of the madness. It? Oh. Um, it might have been like just before. But you went there with Tony. And, I, you and that's a, the only reason I would have done Mardi Gras because one of my bestest buddies for, you know, we've known each other forever. Um, her family owned uh, a building uh, a storefront on St. Charles Street. And so everybody, and they're a big Italian family. So everybody's coming, they're bringing the pasta fazool. And like, we literally had two t- big conference tables of food and another of just liquor. <laughs> which I thought was hilarious. And we, so you're up out of the, out the of parade. The right. Yeah. And so you're hanging out the windows and you're hollering at the guys on the floats and trying to get them to throw you the the primo beads. And yeah. so I, um, I, I just they actually threw me some. <laughs> it's so funny. I probably yeah. shouldn't say this, but at one end of the room, the girls were trying to entice the guys to throw the beads up by, you know, lifting parts of their clothing. Meanwhile, I was at the other end. I make eye contact with a guy and I'm like, hey, hey, up here, buddy, you know? And he threw them to me and I caught the, the Primo beads and they turned, they were like, what? You didn't even, and they were like so ashamed. It was so funny, but Don't it was the like- the guys actually sit, uh, like stay down there and they chant, lift parts of your clothing. Yes, they do. They chant, they chant that. They say show oh something. My God. Anyway, <laughs> but they were so mad. It was so funny, but but it was really just, uh, he just wanted to see if he could throw all the way up to the window. It was, mm. you know, it was, so the, uh, anyway, it was, it was a lot of fun. And that is how you run into my cousin? <laughs> no. Did and, you run into my cousin there, Rick? <laughs> Somebody, no, no. I didn't know you then. Mom went down there, or Wendy went down there to face paint and ran into Rick. At Mardi Gras? Yeah, they thought it would be like a big face painting thing that everybody would be into it. They could make a killing. Oh my God, that was a disaster. It did not go well. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. But they ran into Rick Dynas, who was just down there with some friends in the middle of Mardi Gras. Oh, ran into my cousin. That is insane. Yeah. Yeah. Very crazy No, it is madness, but we would would go down when we wanted to and walk, uh, you know, along the parade and all of that. And then when you get exhausted from being amongst the crowd, you just go back upstairs. It was pretty sweet. But um, yeah, but they're, they're excited for it. It's been a little slow coming back, I think, for the conventions and for the business and for the tourism. Crime's kind of a problem there. I was warned a few oh, times. Oh, gosh, yeah. You know, be careful when you're going out, go out in groups and things. And of course, I did my weekly video so early in the morning. I know, I was terrified. I was like, the security guy I was talking to was like, you know, keep your head on a swivel. But it was no problem. And um, it was actually, it's really a cool culture, but they're like oh, anywhere. Oh, it is. We, you and I went down and... and- Used to go see jazz yeah. and loved it. It used to be so so awesome, but yeah. But in in cities, you know, there's people who who don't have much and who are living on the street and cold and and need money or have habits and have addictions and so crazy things happen. Um, but no, I think it's going to be. I think it's going to come back. New Orleans always does after hurricanes, after yep. catastrophes. Uh, Super yeah, Bowl I'd, losses. I'd love to visit. <laughs> <laughs> I'd love to visit New Orleans. Um, New Orleans. I don't, New, New Orleans. Orleans. Yeah. New Orleans. Um, mainly, this is probably not the best reason, but mainly because I watched the originals, which is a, a vampire, werewolf, witch oh, yeah. TV show. And it's, yeah. uh, it's set there, although I believe a lot of it was filmed in... Um, Georgia. Georgia. But, <laughs> but New Orleans um, is a big movie town. 
they, I, I've yeah, seen some things shot there. Yeah. I have a friend um, filming there now. John, John <laughs> yep. Zimmerman <laughs> is a stunt coordinator. He, or stunt director, like supervisor. He's worked there a ton. Yeah. Yeah. So I was going to tell you though, my speech, yeah. sometimes weird things happen and sometimes embarrassing things happen and humbling things happen. And those moments are, are real too. And you have to learn from them, but just, you know, there's that relationship between sometimes you just got to celebrate what worked and, and share that sense of pride or accomplishment or gratitude. And yeah, I think it's nice to celebrate, celebrate things that you're proud of. Um, yeah, I think of that a lot with like auditions when, when somebody will ask like how it went or like, how do you, that's, that's something we talk about a lot, like in different classes and stuff and like coaching and everything is you'll do a scene or whatever. And they'll say, how do you, how do you think that went? And it's always my first instincts and what I've seen from other people, um, the first instinct is to undersell yourself and to say like, oh, I think I, it was all right. Um, or I didn't feel good. Like, even if it was a really good performance and usually the thing following that when somebody s says that they weren't proud of what they just did or they didn't think it was very good, the response is usually, no, that was good. Like mm -hmm. that, of course there's things we can improve, but that was good. Why, why would you say that it isn't? Um, and so finding a place to, to celebrate what feels good and to, to be aware of when you're doing things well, but also not to be, not to be prideful, not, not to brag, not to like, it's such a line, you know? Mm -hmm. Well, and if you don't walk that line, if you get prideful, that's when something happens that humbles you quickly. Oh yeah. <laughs> and, and so it's better to err on that side of like, uh, you know, not, not being braggadocious, but the, um, but I think what happens is it's our insecurities, right? It's like, you, in yeah. the absence of any confirmation that you did well, then you're going to write this story that oh, it wasn't that great or it could have been better. And, you know, sometimes you just don't know. And what else, the other thing that's going to happen, Maggie, when you get, as you get more successful and, and, and accomplished in your career is that you're going to have colleagues around you who really understand that level of success or are at a level even above where you're at or whatever. It's like, and you've got that now you've got great friend groups and peers around you and people that you can like share in that celebration and that victory. And, and they get it because they understand it because they know what that feels like too. Yeah. Um, and then, it, it, and the more you, the higher you climb, the more you can share that with other people. And you'll find, I think that even in those moments of like superstardom, you know, people still feel insecurity. They just do. It's part yeah. of human nature. Well, it's incredible exactly. to... I, go ahead. Go ahead. No, you go ahead. I was just going to say it is... It's incredible how much opinions so quickly sway how you feel about what you just did. Oh, if you definitely. do something and someone's first reaction, you feel that was great, and someone's first reaction was, oh, not your best, huh? you, everything that you felt is like so quickly devalued, devalued, you know what I mean? Yeah. Mm. And so yeah. I think finding a line and like a trust with yourself of, no, I also know what's good. They have an opinion, yeah. but I have an opinion as well. And listening to your own as well as other people's, you know what I mean? Because also listening yes. to other people's opinions, sometimes yours is wrong. You know, sometimes, sometimes other people see things you can't see, but if someone's just being mean for the sake of being mean or tearing you down, or even just not intentionally being mean, but saying something that maybe wasn't super helpful in the moment, just check in with yourself because you were also present. You are also very aware of whatever, you know, insert whatever you're doing or working on or your passion project or whatever. Um, and just remember your side of it as well and what you put into it. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Yeah. The other, that's really good. And then, you know, and that might be coming, whatever somebody else uh, said might be motivated from a place of like, jealousy or insecurity. Like they feel like they could never do that. So the only way they can make themselves feel better is to bring you down a bit. Or disconnect. They, maybe or they just they're, don't know. Yeah. Maybe, maybe it's something that they don't relate to the material. So it's not yeah. about, you exactly. know, yeah, a particular every, performance like at all. Everything. It's just like, exactly. Yeah. Or they don't appreciate the technique. And that's the thing is like, 
the stuff that, that you like being on stage or like working a crowd or, or acting any of it, when you do it super well, it looks so effortless and people can't really appreciate how hard it was. And, Mm. and I find like, you know, if there's, if they're not educated enough to, to provide that criticism or to provide a critique, um, then you've really got to take what they say with a grain of salt. Cause they, people just tend to under oversimplify, I guess what they see. Um, and that's okay too, because it's an experience. You're trying to create an experience. Yeah. So New Orleans, New Orleans. Oh my gosh, which is it? <laughs> it's New Orleans. New Orleans. Who says New Orleans? People who don't know how to say New Orleans. All right. People that is who a are strong wrong. stance actually, this podcast just people, took. <laughs> oh, even even people in New Orleans don't. I mean, I, even saying New Orleans might not be exactly. You got to say Nolans. more like New Orleans. New Orleans. Yeah, like but uh, <laughs> well, while well, you were there, Nolans. bright and early, the the weekly video you shot. Um, yeah, how was that? Yeah, no, it was good. It was cold. It was windy, and so uh, and dangerous and, and dangerous, <laughs> and uh, no, and, and uh, you know all those lovely things. And I had a script that I wrote, and it was inspired actually by a listener for this podcast who asked us a question in at wholesomechaos.com where we answer questions. We take your topics and such, and it's Izzy. Izzy, um, I-S-S-Y, so Izzy, uh, Izzy, she asked about, like, studying. <laughs> and if it's not Izzy, then you just said it wrong, like, five times. So yeah, many exactly. times. But we do know how to say New Orleans. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, like, either Izzy, like a Z sound, or Izzy with the S sound. Which I've never heard that. So I've never heard Izzy. that either. I, I said Izzy in my, vid- in my video. So anyway, so I did my weekly video which is on YouTube, uh, Dan Thurman, but I did that for you, Izzy. And um, the, the question was, how do I manage studying for finals and get motivated to do it? So she's studying for finals and looking for how to get motivated and find some structure around that. But I took, I kind of broadened that concept out to really talk about like, how do you get through anything that you don't want to do and think about these tests that are coming up as like, um, not just the that test, but like how do you see the test as a preparation for a future test and how you handle this is kind of setting you up for the next thing and how there's no such thing as a final exam because every every test is just <laughs> a, always another a journey to something else that's getting, you know, making you harder, that, that, that's, um, that's making you tougher uh, and, and capable of stepping up to it. Um, so anyway, it was, it was good. It was much more profound than what I just said, (laughs) (laughs) but I think we've talked a little bit about that before, but like, do you have any tips to add to that in terms of preparation? I think people should watch your video. (laughs) Yeah, definitely. I I nailed on, uh, like, you know, how to chunk it into some parts. You helped with this too, honey. And like, how do you break it up into sections and energize in different ways between studying and, uh, you know, I said something about like find somebody who somebody else who's super passionate about that subject and just talk with them, even if you don't study with them, but like see if you could at least get a glimpse of their perspective. So you can kind of like borrow that and take that into some motivation and energy for studying. And yeah, when I, I remember when I was in school studying, um, having the conversation with somebody about the subject matter and with our notes that came back to me during the test. So that was a huge help. We'd just talk over the stuff, not just not just like, oh, quiz me on this question and this question. We just talk over like what happened during this battle or this part of history or whatever. And those conversations were huge in remembering later for the test. The other thing I said was, um, you know, don't the idea of the all nighter and like cramming the night before and make sure you get a good night's sleep. Like that never works out well. And so the focused preparation in this in the chunks that you can manage combined with like a rested brain, a well-fed brain and going in like just relaxed and curious is is I think going to win the day over and that's, cramming all night. Oh yeah. That's ideal, but also as someone who like I mean, you know, in high school had so many things going on at once. I also understand like running out of time. Like, yeah, you have a big, you know, you have a big test on Thursday. However, you also have a big test on Tuesday and a quiz on Wednesday. And like, it, it's really difficult. I feel like it's really easy to undersell 
how hard high school is while in high school because your teachers are always telling you, oh, college is going to be harder than this. I remember in middle school, they're always like, you know, high school, you're going to have to do this, this, and this. And like, you're always going to have to write in cursive. They like told us that every single day. They're like, you have, you have to write in cursive. I never had a teacher ask me to write in cursive in high school. They were like, please don't try. <laughs> don't, don't make this harder on us. Um, no, that's and a good like, point. High school that, is that just, it, it's so hard. Yeah, but if you if you have a test on Thursday, but you got a quiz on Wednesday and whatever, even if you just took 10 minutes to look over your notes and say, like, I don't really have time to study, but just those little bits, as mm-hmm. opposed to doing it all at once, you're actually going to remember better. But it's been scientifically proven that the staying up all night to cram, you do worse than just going ahead and making sure you're getting your seven hours sleep you actually will do better because what you do know, you'll you'll know. Whereas if you stay up all night cramming, all of that information you thought you were putting in your brain, your brain is exhausted and it cannot retrieve it. Yeah, and I agree that it's not ideal, but I, I also do recall in high school having a quiz or something the next day and just going, you know what, it's not even worth it. Like I need, I need my sleep. And then yep. that quiz, I bro, I didn't know even the words it was asking about. It was like chemistry <laughs> well, if you or haven't something. Read anything? Yeah, but, you're not gonna have it. <laughs> there was one time I don't. I never told you about this, but there was one time in college that I had a gig in Atlanta. You know where I, Athens, Georgia, University of Georgia, but like an hour, a little over an hour away from downtown Atlanta. And I had a gig there, so I was doing shows or walk around or something like that for hours at this some big party, and you know I did my thing, and I drove back and I had a, I had a paper due, not just a test, but I had a paper that I had to turn in by like eight o'clock the next morning. And I had not even started it. Mm-hmm. And this was very unusual for me, but I, I like literally got back at like 11 o'clock and or midnight. Chat. Now, I know there was no WeChat back then. <laughs> and I pulled this paper like out of my brain and out of my butt. And I was like, <laughs> okay, we're going to figure this out and just get the words on the paper. And I was up all night. I turned it in. I I did not get a good grade on it, but at least I turned it in. Um, and that was one of those where it's like, you know, I I, I was had my motorcycle at the time. Like I rode my bike in to the classroom, turned it in, and just left and came back and slept. <laughs> yeah. It was miserable. But, but I mean, I think you almost have to do something like that at least once. Just to yeah, know what like, it's like. I never did. That's <laughs> like, I never none of us are arguing that ever. it's ideal. But yeah, um, exactly. I, I'm going to, this is my, I don't know if you guys know this or not, probably not. This was a very common thing in college for me, not for me, but I knew a lot of people who did this. I didn't ever do this. Um, and in high school, ever since, you know, post COVID and during COVID, everything for the most part was like turn in online. If you had a paper, you had an assignment that was not completed and you had to turn it in and you were running out of time. There are websites online that Mm -hmm. will create a corrupted file. So when you turn it in, it's an error. And so it looks like something went wrong when you were uploading it. Therefore, it's on the internet. It's on this whole COVID thing because everything's online and no one wants to be it online. So the next day, the teacher's probably going to email you and ask you, like, can you resubmit it? Because it got corrupted. Um, And by that Mm. point, you have 24 more hours. Yeah, I heard Again, of that. I never did it, but I hadn't heard of it's it. It's smart. You got to admit that, that's kind of smart. It's a little criminal. Yeah, too. it's just you know when you so you, you you do that once or whatever. But if you try to live your life like that, it yeah, will you catch can't up get away with, with it all the time. Yeah, no, you can't. Sure. You know, and if you do it once, okay, whatever. Maybe maybe twice, but. That's not lifetime. preparing for future tests. <laughs> no, like, it's, uh, not. <laughs> it's not. Because real life don't work that way. Yeah. Yep. I can imagine just, that you're like, oh, my speech take is corrupted. Zero and, <laughs> and keep your, <laughs> your honesty. Yeah. 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 It's all good. But it, is he good luck on your finals? I think it's uh, going to go great. And let us know if that was helpful or at least distracting, amusing. <laughs> So you guys just went through a major life change. How does it feel? Oh, yes. Well, I feel like we've been going through that change for quite a while. <laughs> it feels like it finally <laughs> actually never, happened, though. Because yeah, it never did. Ending yeah. move. Oh, exactly. I said, I'm not going to believe it until the buyers have signed and the money has hit our bank account. And even then, it still was like, and it, 24 hours has passed. <laughs> 
just seemed like it just yeah. went on forever. Yeah, you guys no, finally good. sold the childhood home that I grew up in, that Eddie grew up in. Eddie grew up in. Yep. Indeed. Indeed. The the only home you've ever lived in mm-hmm. until you until you left. Yeah. Uh but yeah, that's that's um it's a monumental moment. But like I said, we've been preparing for it for a long time. The pro- I'm glad the process took so long because it really gave us a chance to um, you know, go through the process, the mourning process, yeah. the the separation process to the point where it's like it didn't even by the end it didn't even feel like our house anymore no, it didn't. because we had changed a lot about it and got it ready and fi- you know basically it was like we were over it. It was like um, it was an empty home that didn't have the colors, you know, the all the we painted all the walls, we changed the carpet everywhere and so uh, there was like two rooms that we didn't paint. And so it did not did not feel or look like our home anymore. And so it was easy for me to not be sad about it. No. But also the fact that we had already moved in here and I'd fallen in love with this new home and the new and the neighborhood and the neighbors are great. And I just feel like this felt like home from the moment we closed on it. I mean, literally, it was crazy when we did our you know, we came and saw it a couple of times, but then when we did our walkthrough, like just before we went to closing, it was like, this is home. It yeah, just, oh, it felt different. It was just like the home, like was like, this is, you know, this is where you're supposed to be. I love it. The law of impermanence, nothing lasts forever. And it was time. It was just time to move yeah. on. And uh, we left it. I feel good about like we left it in good shape Yeah, and we left it with good people. Like I yeah. hope, and that they well, got a good deal. Him, <laughs> like we never met them, but I think that they were good people. You know, at least I, I, I hope so for our neighbor's sake. And yeah, stuff I told on. our neighbors, I said, <laughs> if they're not nice, you guys move up to our neighborhood because I'm, I do miss our neighbors. No. You know, we were, we've got some original people still in the cul-de-sac there that, you know, we all were original owners and that's, that's what I miss. I did have the thought, though, of like, you guys put so much work into that house to get everything fixed up, um, things that we had just become accustomed to, and that were kind of like, oh, yeah, that's just how that is. (laughs) And (laughs) it made me think, like, what if what if we always just lived with our house in the best condition? (laughs) Yeah, that's that's the the thing. It's like you wish you could do that. Um, I wish I could take the fire pole with us. Mm -hmm. I wish I could take our tree and the deck. Yeah, Malachi. Yeah, our big, all that big kind of tree. stuff. There were a lot of really things that were special. You think about all the TikToks we made there, mm-hmm. you know, all the memories. Um, but again, it's like they're memories. They're yep. in the past. And we're making yeah. memories here already. We've had so many people come stay here at the new house. We've probably had more people in the, what, six, eight months that we've, we had, it hadn't been eight months, I don't think, that we've owned this house. We have had more house guests than we probably had in the last 10 years at Brightwater. Yeah. Man. And we love it. So if you're ever in the Atlanta area <laughs> and you and you want to come say hello. We actually have we literally emptied the storage shed um a couple days ago and we and Philip and Posh are come in and Dan's parents tomorrow. And I'm like, we have you boxes butt, everywhere. You took and care so of it. yeah, I'm I'm working on it, but I, I gotta be gone all day. I literally had what, twenty four hours? It never ends, people. <laughs> it will. Life it does. Is, is a is a moving target, and it you just never... gotta keep aiming. Never what? Nothing. Go ahead. <laughs> Sorry. You, you were gonna say it never. Well, I was gonna say it never ends, but this podcast does. But then you kept talking. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> so I could just cut segue. you off. Well, and, and life eventually does end. Oh yep. well, that's not the segue yeah. we wanted to make. Yeah, so, hey, you don't have to die yet, but you can <laughs> listen to another podcast because this one's over. <laughs> Man, well, on that note, that was, I love you both. That wasn't so good. And we love you too, Maggie. I love you, Maggie. We love you, everyone. Have a great week, and we'll talk to you again soon. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Did I tell you guys I finished the puzzle? <gasps> no. You, did you find the extra pieces? Br- bro, one sec.
Oh my gosh. Drum roll, please. Maggie Finished is it. bringing back. Modge podged it. One Whoa. piece. One piece is gone. <gasps> so you really were missing one piece. And yep. it's in the middle? That's so, so lame. Mm -hmm. Well, here's the thing. I'm still going to hang it up on the wall. And my friend had a really good idea that if I ever find the piece, I'm going to frame it and hang it Separate? next to the puzzle. Oh, that's perfect. <laughs> I love it. Mm. Yeah. <laughs>